I can start. All right. Very good. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Good, good to be here at, at uh, Assembly. Um, my name is Ville Vesterinen. I'm a co-founder and uh, CEO at a company called Gray Area, a Finnish mobile games developer, uh, firmly based, based here in Helsinki. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, what we do at Gray Area is that we have a game, game on called Shadow Cities. How many of you guys know Shadow Cities? Quite a few. How many of you guys have played Shadow Cities? Okay, very good. So I, I won't go too deep into what Shadow Cities is or or how it's played or you know how that unfolds, but I'll I'll try to talk about the <coughs> like look forward, talk about the future and some of uh, some of our learnings around the around the location and gaming. So I actually um, I made a presentation yesterday and and uh, <coughs> was really really happy with it, but uh, this morning, actually a couple hours ago, I thought that since it's the future, I should, shouldn't should talk so much about uh, what we're doing and what's out there in the moment, but kind of try to look look into the future. So this is a bit of a leap. So uh, bear with me. It's, it's uh, completely unpracticed, uh, so, something that, that we've been kind of mulling around and thinking about at Gray Area. So um, the, the structure of the, of the presentation, I'll try to talk 20, 30 minutes, try to be really quick so we can have a discussion. Uh, first, I'll really briefly uh, talk about the past, you know, the location. It's very emerging space, if you will. Uh, there hasn't been many games that have actually worked. It's, it's mainly been science projects, EU projects, a uh, few attempts, but but nothing nothing major. Um, we at Gray Area we believe that you know we're building a new category of games, uh, and uh, and thankfully Shadows it is when we pushed it out people have liked it. But the the past is not so rosy and not so long. Uh, the now again like what's out now? What do what do we think is happening at the moment? Uh, and then of course the probably the most in interesting part is the future. Where are we going? And, and then kind of the next step, which I think uh, we're not quite yet there, which I, I call big data. So when we talk about location-based mobile games, uh, I think it's, it's good to define you know, what that is. It's a bit of a mouthful. So, so what I'm, you know, right or wrong, what I'm talking about today is uh, um, game played on a mobile handset that uh, uses your location not only as a, you know, a, a small feature on the side, but actually something that's very central to the gameplay. So uh, how how that you know game captures the location. Um, so going going to the you know what's what's been out there before, and this is uh, how many of you guys know what this is. Oh, actually, it says what it is. So it's it's a, it's Bot Fighters uh, came out 2001 uh, in Sweden uh, by a Swedish developer. Was completely SMS based, uh, you know, rather cumbersome. I guess what killed it is that the the operators actually pocketed all the profits, and it was extremely uh, expensive to play. You you know you paid for every single SMS, and uh, uh, you, you the game was. 24/7, so going going on all the time. Not not such a, such a great great success story, but something something to uh, recognize. Here's the you know beautiful UI. They also had it in in Russia. Uh, you know again bot fighters. Then uh, 2003 game uh, uh, game out uh, uh, game called Mogi uh, in Japan, which is you know, one would imagine it's a fertile ground for all kinds of different, very immersive game concepts. Um, again, you know, wasn't that big of a success. You could, that's the mobile screen right there. Uh, you know, you could kind of, it, it was literal. Wherever you were, you kind of saw your surrounding. Then, you know, you went back home, you looked at the browser, and you could actually you know, see that I want to go there and then pick that stuff up. And then you had to go there physically, literally, 
uh, to big it up. You couldn't, there was no interaction through the browser to the desktop. So everything happened in the, in the mobile handset. Again, you know, uh, interesting experiment, not much of, a, much of a success. All right, so where we, where we are at the moment, what, what, are, what are we seeing? So <coughs> I, I think it's, um, or we think that it's, it's completely new macro. It's a, it's a big wave that, uh, you know, um, is coming, the kind of location and, and everything immersive. So, I, you know, the, the end user handsets, the experiences are there the first time. The, actually, the infrastructure networks, whether it's 3G uh, or whatnot, um, you know, those start to come together. 2007, this was when, actually, this was when we started to play around with the idea. Um, uh, I remember Mikko and Andreas at Gray Area, they had the idea for years, like location-based games. Like, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, you could play around your city and, you know, kind of build a game around that social structure. But, but uh, then one day, you know, Steve came out with iPhone. And uh, if we, we all remember the handsets before that, they, you know, they were pretty horrid. Uh, kind of the, the, the browsing experiences and, and, and all of that. And Mika, Mika, Mika showed the, the, the phone with the trembling hand and, you know, look at this, guys. This is pretty magical. And it, and it really was. And then, you know, that kind of started the process for Gray Area. And um, now we have a game out. But, but uh, I, I think there's a lot more companies. What we're seeing, what we're hearing, uh, a lot of different companies. We haven't seen a lot of the, lot of the games out yet. But, but there's a lot of happening, kind of bubbling under. And uh, if you think about the rise of, say, what we call social games in the mobile space, um, or even in the browser base, Facebook, say, you know, what Zynga is doing, I, I think the, the, you know, the, it's a completely new market and it's equally big opportunity. So it really is massive and, and you know, as we see, uh, I think it's, it's going to be extremely disruptive. Um, so what, what does that mean? Where, you know, what are we seeing out there? This is, uh, this is from Shadow Cities. So this is what we've been working on. It's um, uh, location-based MMORPG, uh, currently only for iOS. And uh, it's been out since late last year in Finland. And only recently we have rolled it out in the US, uh, rest of the Europe. So what you have is, is uh, you know, those of you um, you know, who have tried the game, uh, know it's kind of like a dystopic world. You can pan around, you know, you're a mage, techno mage, you're casting spells uh, with this pattern, recogni uh, pattern recognition uh, algorithm on a touch screen. What do you do? You conquer neighborhoods for your team, two teams, arc rivals battling against each other. And then, you know, you can kind of you know, zoom in to the street level, pan up, you know, see what's happening around the city, which, you know, team has conquered, which part of the neighborhood, uh, chats, super social experience, a lot deeper gameplay. So, you know, the first kind of real game, uh, if, if you will, not just, uh, um, you know, shooting birds or, or, you know, whatever it might be. So, so a, a, a real game. Um, so that's, that's, you know, what we, we have pushed out. We haven't seen a lot of different, um, uh, other, other dif different location-based mobile games yet, but, but, but I believe they are, they are coming. There's, you know, like the, kind of the learnings or what we have found out, it's um, uh, uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, when you think about a location, most people think about, okay, well, it's a lat long pair, latitude, longitude coordinates on a map interface, right? That's kind of the first thing, um, first thing you think about. And, and uh, I, I think, you know, that's, um, that, that's, that's not necessarily how you should think about the location, especially in games. Uh, and I think we're kind of moving onwards, but, but that, that really has been the, um, you know, way to perceive that. And, and when we think about what maps really should do. There's, there's a, 
um, um, like a political maps, you know, territories, and then there's maps that, you know, show the topography, you know, like here's a mountain and all of that. And that's not necessarily so exciting. So, and, and there's the specific challenges to it. We actually mapped out, this is like a visualization of like very early days with shadow cities. You can see the, the lights. So those are all the players. Uh, in Finland that we have at that point, but whether you go to the street level, whether you pan up, you know, if your UI is a map, it, it can be either, you know, fairly empty, you hit the critical mass problem, or it can be very cluttered. So, uh, of course, you know, that brings a lot of immersion with it, but you want to be smart, smart, uh, smart about it. The, here's, here's some others um, that you know, we know that uses the location. These are more services than games. But at the same time, I, I think, you know, like if you think about it, I think a game should be much more than just uh, basically an activity feed. You know? not, not super exciting, but different takes on what the UI, what the location you know, could do. And this actually touched the point that I'll go later on that that you know what location actually actually means in the future. Um, then here's here's another another take on it. This is a company called Layer, in uh, based in Amsterdam, uh, a massive you know kind of dabbles around science. You know, really a technology play, but but I think that's you know rather clumsy, uh, a bit awkward, and uh, I I have yet to see one use case that actually you know works and and you know you have it's us you know using that technology so so playing a game like this all the time it it at least now it it doesn't doesn't feel very natural so i i think that's um that's not necessarily what i believe is is the future of of location so what it what it what it is uh what we we believe that uh location could look like going forward is is not just not necessarily think about it again like latitude longitude pairs like like exact mirroring of the of the um, real world in the game world but actually you know look at looking at the context and what what that that really means uh, there's a um, a, a good friend of mine Yuri Engström who was, a, who was an entrepreneur, very successful at that, uh, founded, um, co-founded a company called Jaiku, uh, more recently a company called Ditto, but, but Yuri has coined this term, a social object in the, in the web space. And, and that hasn't really um, been looked at very carefully in the, in the game space. And, and what it really means is, or how he puts it, is that, that um, people don't just connect to each other, so, it just, you know, it's not just connections, but it's actually the, the objects that, that, you know, the shared objects that, that make it tick, that make it work. Um, so a, a good example is if you think about on the service place, uh, service space, you think about, for example, photos on a Facebook, you know, there's always a, you know, wild conversation going around that photo. So why? Because if it's, if it's, um, Say if it, you know it, it's my kid, uh, my relatives want to comment about it. That's something we share, right? Uh, same thing, you know. If, if it's from your bachelor party, you know, all those people find it, you know, super hilarious. So it's something we share. We both were there. So so those kind of spark the social relationship going. You know, YouTube, it's videos, uh, all of that stuff. So I, I think you know, in, in games, uh, same applies. You know, most. Uh, in my mind, like you know, very successful games, it it really comes down to, you know, uh, social experiences. So you know, the whole purpose of leaderboards, you know, all these, um, you know, like we designers know that you know, for example, giving something to somebody, you build social capital. So uh, it, it it really is about other people as much as it, it it's about a single player experience. So, so keeping that in mind, for example, in uh, um, in, in Shadow Cities, uh, you know, we have, you know, built this kind of social anchors. What you do is you conquer neighborhoods, and instantly when you get into the game, it's a signal that that a group of people 
um, probably go into the game in that area, no. And, and you know, you have a um, relationship with that, that uh, um, given object being the location. So, so the gameplay and the conversation, you actually connect over that uh, node or, or over that location. So, so uh, you know, something, something very important to remember uh, you know, when you're looking into doing, doing uh, location-based games. So it's not necessarily just, uh, um, you know, vanilla, um, emo you know, emotionless uh, point on a map. It's actually something, something that, uh, that, you know, other people might recognize, share. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a value in it. Um, a, a great, great writer, great academic, uh, actually coined it very well. So, kind of, kind of what the what the really the gist of it is on a on a larger context is that that and and you can you can fill in by putting location there or whether it's a venue, whether it's a neighborhood. Um, we grow to love the object that connect us to other people, create meaning, and remind us we're alive. So you know what when we think about what really makes the games we play, you know, the social games, really exciting experiences. I, I really think that it, it comes down to that. So, you know, sharing those experiences, you know, when they are gone, remembering those, talking about them. So that kind of that really ties it together and, and really same applies to the location. Um, if you look at other services, here's a, here's a good example. You know, for example, how people are sharing the conversation builds around the photos. Um, you know, same thing applies for for location. Here's another service that was from Facebook. This is a service called SoundCloud. A friend of mine, Alex, uh, is is actually you know, and these are not just songs. It's audio, and and you can look at you can see, you know, how many comments he gets. So again, shared experience. In this case, the object, you know, just happens to be happens to be music. Uh, so, so going back to it, uh, you know, connecting us to other people, creating meaning, you know, in our little lives, uh, in our little games, um, reminding us that you know we're all alive and and, and uh, um, you know, kind of, kind of, really on a on a high level. But, but I, I guess you know what we believe at Gray Area that in the future, uh, this is exactly. These are exactly the kind of the, the the location is the social anchor. The different nodes uh, are are you know similar objects that that you know we share uh, you know with our close ones with the people we play games. So same thing is already happening in in, in uh, multiplayer games, but but now you bring in uh, a new variable and uh, it it can be you know used right. It can be extremely um, valuable at that because because it is something that a lot of people share. A lot of people already have a relationship with that. For example, my example here. Um, this is this is exactly this is taken. You know, I played the game uh, this morning, and I live in Punavuori, and I I have a strong little relationship. It, it's almost for me. It's like. A, you know, kind of like a football team. You know, if you're gonna come and try to take over my neighborhood, I'm like, you know, not happening. You're not coming here. So, you know, I'll, I'll fiercely battle over that. So, <laughs> you already have a strong relationship with that. So, kind of leveraging that and not just necessarily seeing it as a as a point point on a map. And and then, you know, what what comes after this? Where where do we go? Because uh, some might say that this is this is pretty obvious, but sometimes it's not so easy to design around this, uh, especially when we talk about the future of mobile games, when the when the user interface is actually quite tiny. Uh, but but kind of like going uh, looking into the future, kind of the um, what's next out there, the the, the kind of the second act is that you know once we start to have location based games and i believe this is fairly soon uh, we start to gather quite a bit of data this is just the 
you know, you can see it's actually pulled from Facebook, but, uh, but you know, similar type of data uh, with different, different variables. And, and what you can then, then do is you don't necessarily have just some make up sandbox, but you tie in the real world, the experiences, the, the kind of the individual data trails and, uh, you know, start to kind of tailor-made, custom-made experiences based on that for those gamers which makes it super personal, super interesting, and uh, um, you, you kind of like, you know, pulls you in. The immersion, immersion is, is totally on a, on, on a new level, and, uh, um, you know, kind of not only now, but, but, you know, understanding the past, you can start to exp extrapolate uh, into the future, where you've been, what do you like to do, uh, and, and then, you know, start to kind of like, um, push the, the gameplay and, and uh, uh, you know, design based on that data. So I, th I think that is coming. We're definitely not there yet, but, uh, but these are some of the things that we're really excited uh, at Gray Area. So this was, in a, in a very brief nutshell, uh, you know, what we think about the future of location-based mobile games uh, could be. So I'm, I'm happy to take any, any questions or comments or remarks you guys might have. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to recognize if the mobile is in this or this position or like? Is it possible, sorry? To recognize in the program if uh, in which uh, position. with the Giro, uh, I guess you can do that. You can, you can, you can. We actually had these ideas that you know, cast, instead of casting spells like this, what if you do with your phone? You would do like this. So you know, big signs, part of the gameplay uh, that you can definitely do. I don't know how, you know, whether you're just flipping it like this, whether that's enough. But, uh, but I would imagine it is because, you know, you, we have all seen those games where uh, you, you might have like a ball that you're trying to get into a hole or whatnot. So I would think that that's, that's possible. We haven't looked at it um, that closely, so. So the, right now the game only exists on iOS, right? Yes, exactly. Only on iOS. Uh, is there any chance of seeing it on any other platform uh, in mobile no, in the near unfortunately, future? Unfortunately, not at the moment, but, but in the future, yes. So we don't have any timelines. It, more than anything else, it's a, it's a matter of resources. So we, we want to make sure the gameplay is, is as good as it can get on one platform and then, you know, start porting. But of course, you know, like when, if you look at the, look at the volumes on different, different platforms, you know, it, it doesn't, no need to be a genius to to look at that. Oh, look at that! Android has quite a few users, and and uh, <coughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens with Windows uh, Windows Phone, but uh, but you know, definitely we don't have any fundamental um, relationship with with iOS that you know we want to keep it only on that. So yeah, we're looking at other platforms as well. Thanks so much um, for the presentation. Um, my question would be if you could uh, elaborate a little bit more about Shadow Cities, um, how people are playing the game, where are they playing the game? Are they sure. more like on the go or is it at home? Like you? Yeah, absolutely. Said. So, and th this was one of the surprises that, you know, our going into it, um, you know, designing the game and, and uh, um, releasing it was that, you know, since it's a mobile phone game, People will probably play it, not location-based uh, mobile game. People will probably play it on a tram stop, couple of minutes, something like that. You know, kind of makes sense when you're out and about. People actually play, you know, very long sessions, and they play where they mostly are. So, wherever your day takes you, and you know, most of us, we are quite a bit at home and at the office. So that's actually that's actually where 
people uh, play quite a bit. Of course, you know, it's super exciting to play on a bus, you know, see somebody, you know, coming on a car and then you pass and people actually call it drive-by spell casting. So when they're going to engage like that. So it, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of great stories around that. But, but you know, most play, pay, people play on their, on their sofas or at work when they're bored or whatnot. So. Anyone else? Um, earlier you were talking, I, I think you were kind of comparing um, this to like uh, social games like the Zynga, like things on Facebook. Do you think that this is a lot easier to get into because, for example, if I wanted to create a, you know, some of these social games on Facebook, I got to compete against like some pretty big, you know, companies. Yeah. But with here, it's... Do you think it's a lot easier, you know, there's not as much competition yeah. in this area? or I mean, I guess the, the risk and return go hand in hand. And, and if you look at any market that's as saturated as, say, Facebook games at the moment, I, right now it's, it's purely execution play when you go there. Mm -hmm. You really have to know what you're doing. Here, it's, there's a lot of experimentation. So... You know, have we exactly nailed it with Shadow Cities? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But um, there's there's a lot more opportunities because nobody knows what it looks like. It doesn't make it. I don't think it does make it any easier. So if you look at the early days of Facebook gaming, uh, <coughs> it could or it could not have happened. You know, if Facebook hasn't been as as big of a success as it was, then you know all those things wouldn't exist. So I think there's a there's a you know risk is involved, and I don't think it's easier, but it's it's definitely um, not as excruciating execution play as as it is in the Facebook platform at the moment. Thank you. Sure. All right. We're done. Thank you.